NVIDIA kept this from us. We should have been able to see this all along. How could they? AMD might have limited themselves before they thought about how they could scale their CPUs and Intel might be competing with the 3070. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. Number one, the hot news sign has been forever immortalized on my body. If you've ever been part of our UFD Tech charity streams, you should know exactly what I'm talking about. I finally got it done yesterday. Check Twitter, no more details than that. Just uh, thank you. But with that being said, we are less than four weeks away from our fourth annual UFD Tech charity stream where we're gonna be raising money for Syngap Research Fund, which is the rare disease organization that's looking to cure the rare disease that my son suffers from. We're actually going to be funding some drug studies this time around so that we could potentially actually have some sort of treatment for him. 100% of all your donations will go towards research. Doesn't come to me. None of that goes to the overhead of the organization since the founders of SRF actually actually pay all of that out of pocket themselves. But I just wanna let you know that you need to mark your calendars October 6th through 8th. We're gonna be doing a roughly 50 to 60 hour live stream of a trip across America just to represent every family that could potentially be affected by this rare disease. And it's gonna be an endurance live stream, which is just a symbol for the endurance that special needs families have to go to and especially Syngap families have to go through when it comes to dealing with seizures and all of the other complications that come with the rare disease that's known as Syngap. So mark your calendars. We're excited. We'll have more details as it's coming out. We're gonna have plenty of giveaways, plenty of surprises, and and potentially even lttstore.com getting put somewhere the sun don't shine. We'll get into all of that later on. But now let's go ahead and talk about how NVIDIA made the RTX 3080 Ti. We talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News that it was appearing in Russia that there was a 3080 Ti with 20 gigabytes on store shelves. And everybody was like, eh, that could be Photoshopped. It could just be a misprint of a label. Who knows? Well, a Russian YouTuber was able to get his hands on it and was able to benchmark it. And it's for really reals and actually performs as you would expect from an RTX 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte in certain benchmarks. The caveat here is that there are no official game drivers for this GPU since technically from Nvidia site, they never made it. This never got released, so it's not supported by the drivers. So they couldn't actually test gaming performance. However, in mining performance, it's spectacular getting nearly a hundred mega hash per second, which is absolutely absurd. Additionally, the YouTuber reached out to Gigabyte Russia and they said, what we can't help you with support on these drivers. This card doesn't exist. We've never made it, which seems to be true. But one of the big things is that that 100 mega hash per second is only because this 3080 Ti doesn't have the LHR hack limitation that Nvidia put on their cards, the light hash rate algorithm, where if it detects your mining Ethereum, it'll slap you in the face, tell you, no, stop it, Jimmy. You're all out of mine. What's wrong with you? GPUs are for gaming only. So it appears that this 3080 Ti was developed before Nvidia implemented that or because Nvidia was never gonna release this publicly, they actually didn't care to put it on there. Who knows, but it's actually really intriguing. Who exactly knows why or how this got slipped through, but in case you wanna check it out and you can also speak Russian, we'll leave links in the video description to the YouTube video as well as the video cards article explaining all of this. What do you think of the RTX 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte edition? Would you have picked one of these up as opposed to the, was it 12 gigabytes? I don't even no, or would you not have picked it up? Because uh, just so you know, this person had to pay $3,000 US in order to pick this up because it was 225,000 rubles. Oh my goodness. That's the price of GPU. And it seems like AMD's decision to go with a ring bus on the Zen 3 architecture might lead to some future limitations that they either were expecting or weren't depending on what's going on behind the scenes there. But Ian Cutrus over on Anantech attending the Hot Chips conference where AMD actually unveiled for the first time ever that they're using a bi-directional ring bus on the Zen 3 layout, which is something that AMD hasn't really disclosed before. And because of that, if you want to read all of the technical reasons why, linked in the video description in the Anantech article, this could potentially limit AMD to only having eight cores on each CCX or chiplet, making it so that they can't necessarily scale past that. Obviously, they could have already decided this and realized that they need to change things when it comes to Zen 4 and how they're actually doing the ring bus. But it's a really interesting look on how things such as the bus and design of the physical cores and how they communicate with each other can actually physically limit how many cores you can have on a device, especially when it comes to things like Intel. They got rid of 
their Ring buses when they realized that 12 was too many when they released the Broadwell high-end desktop chips. It was just like, we can't, we can't do this. There's too much latency. Has AMD realized that? Are they going to realize it? Probably, they're really smart engineers, but it's an intriguing deep dive look in case you wanna check it out. Also, intriguing deep dive looks into the world of quantum computing. New research has come out which has demonstrated triple qubit silicon-based quantum computing mechanism, which is different than the double qubit setup that is normally happening. Because in quantum computing, they entangle two different qubits that mirror each other so that they can actually do all of the stuff that superposition quantumness allows you to do. But with this new research, you could actually use three qubits, which allows it so that you're not just stacking more pairs, but you're actually stacking triplets like a triple core processor, almost not exactly like that, but it's an intriguing look at how they could potentially increase the scalability of quantum processors later on down the line. Intriguing stuff. And we need quantum processors because that's the only way to hack Bitcoin. Let's get into the crypto stocks update. Bitcoin and crypto continuing its slide down 2.35% on the day is Bitcoin to just under $46,000. As you can see, fell off the cliff sometime on September 7th. Ethereum also down for very little, less than 1% to be at 34.71. Dogecoin down 2.66% to sit at 25 cents. Meme stonks also having a little rough day, down 0.1% to 198.80 is GameStop and AMC down 0.9% to be at 47.40. But as we continue talking about memes, let's talk about Tesla and their Roadster laser wipers. This is something that Elon Musk has kind of talked about. There was information out there that they had submitted a patent for this, where it's gonna use lasers to clear debris that might be on your windshield, whether that's raindrops or you got a leaf that dared to fall on your $250,000 sports car windshield while it's gonna do. Scott got rid of it. That's how these lasers work. Anyways, the patent was actually granted to Tesla earlier this week where they're gonna zoom zoom all of the water that's appearing on your windshield. You won't need to use it anymore, which does seem to be intriguing. The Cybertruck also not supposed to have windshield wipers, which I guess they're gonna use these lasers for. However, just to look at the other side of the argument for a second, Tesla already has an auto wiper system that somehow uses cameras to detect rain and it sucks. It is awful. I do not, I have never, and will never enable auto wipers on my Tesla because it is just so bad. It's awful. Like physical wiper, the like control is everything you need. So I don't trust them with auto wipers. They said that they fixed it with a full self-driving beta update. They did not. It's absolutely anus. It's not good. I don't know if I trust them to do this. They also did the stupid thing with the yoke, which every reviewer I've watched has said that it's as stupid as it looks. So Tesla, just because you got the patent doesn't mean you have to do it. Please don't do it. Speaking of other weird ideas and features that are rolling out, Twitter announcing that they're rolling out communities where you can get together in communities on Twitter to argue about your favorite stand and ship and just make it so that it's a toxic environment like a subreddit. It's beautiful, but more toxic because Twitter, I think, is a little more toxic than Reddit, depending on which subreddit you go into. Anyways, Twitter explaining that the communities thing will, you can have self-moderated Twitter communities, which is just absolutely gonna go swimmingly. There's no way that they're ever gonna have to shut this down and that you will have the community stuff show up in your timeline, you can participate in it, you can invite people into that if you want. I don't think this is a good idea. What do you think of Twitter communities? Let me know down below in the comments. But what we're talking about, new updates. LG announcing that it has a new real folding window display, which is as hard as glass, but it's essentially plastic and it's coated on both sides in order to get it flexed really well. Obviously this implementation would be on foldable smartphones, with them saying that you're gonna be able to bend it 200,000 times without getting that crease that appears there. And it's gonna perform more like glass as far as its hardness, but more like plastic and its bendability. We'll see. It's supposed to roll out sometime in 2022. And we've been seeing whether or not the James Webb telescope was ever gonna launch. It's been delayed after delayed after delayed after delayed. It's supposed to be the replacement for the Hubble telescope, which went up in 1990. My flipping goodness. Now we're getting a modern telescope that's supposed to go up there and it's gonna be launching December 18th, at least according to the latest uh, NASA report, which I wouldn't buy this. I'm gonna say it's gonna launch next year. I don't I don't fully trust that. That's too close to the end of the year, NASA. You're gonna let that one slip, aren't you? 2022 is when the James Webb telescope, if it launches December 18th, I'm gonna be incredibly shocked. And you might be incredibly shocked when your coworkers start yelling at you on Gmail. Yes, because the Gmail app will soon be able to make voice and video calls via Google Meet on the Gmail mobile app where you'll be able to ring up your your co-workers for a quick on one-on-one -on -one when email or a scheduled meeting won't do, all right? The feature will also send a chirp 
to your computer if you'd rather answer on the larger screen. Google's pitching this as a rough equivalent to spontaneous office chats in a hybrid work environment where some staff are home, which I will say that this idea is pretty decent, although it just feels like they're adding features onto something that probably should be like its own setup. One of the things that we've been using here for Hot News is actually an app called TeamFlow, which I've been enjoying. It has its limitations. It's very clearly in its early stages of how it's being rolled out, but we can just like actually have these water cooler chats where I can pop in to Reese's room and just sit on a couch next to him and be like, hey, Reese, hey, who are you working on? And he'll be go, oh, my Jesus, you scared, oh, you scared the poo out of me. And then I tell him what I need. In case you've been looking for like some sort of virtual uh, hangout thing for your office, check out TeamFlow. I don't know, I'm not sponsored by them. I just, I've been enjoying it. And it seems like it's a better implementation because it's built from the ground up to be this hybrid setup in mind. Whereas like this Gmail stuff is just like, hey, how do we, how do we capitalize on this whole pandemic situation? I don't know. And how does NZXT capitalize on your mouth? with a microphone, that's right, NZXT announcing the capsule USB microphone, which actually looks pretty spectacular. It's gonna come in black or white. It's gonna cost $129. Has a cool few features, such as the ability to uh, toollessly remove it from its stand and then put it on a boom arm, which they are also selling the boom arm, I believe for $100 as well. Reviews that I'm seeing of this is that it's all right, probably not worth $129, doesn't have as much base response as from something like an Elgato Wave 3, but it's a decent option. It actually looks pretty minimalistic in case that's your thing. You can check it out in case you're interested. And we could check out this latest rumor about AMD's MI300 GPU, which we don't even have the MI200 GPU, so take this for what it's worth. But there's a rumor out there saying that's gonna feature four compute tiles. So it's gonna be a multi-chip module with four, whereas the next generation MI200 is supposed to have two and the current gen only has one. So, rumor for something coming out in 2025. Now here's a rumor about something that's coming out in 2022. There's some indication that Intel looks to be competing with the RX 6700 XT and RTX 3070 with their upcoming Alchemist GPUs. This is based on a slide that has been seen by the known leaker, which states that Intel is targeting 175 to 225 watt skew competition with, again, the 6700 XT and the 3070. No official benchmarks being put out there. The odd comparison of TDP as far as like the benchmark of how they're competing might be a little weird until if they're actually doing this might have some weird marketing angles that they'll take with it where they're just like it's not better than the 3070 but it's close enough and it's better at performance per watt which we heard that angle before from amd on the rx 480 where it absolutely sucked at performance per watt especially when we compared it to the 1060 and still kind of does but with that being said i need to get off my butt because it hurts because of the whole you know hot news logo situation down there, which lttstore.com? I don't know, stay tuned for the charity stream. They told me if I want to do it, I have to do it in the Comic Sans, which that's an exclusive report you're hearing here on Hot News. And I've told nobody else this, LTT Store and Comic Sans on Brett's ass. Hope that made you enjoy your breakfast. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about NVIDIA losing CUDA to Risk 5